Warning. This episode contains foul language, discussions about anxiety and depression, and mention of suicide. Well, hello, friends. It's been a while. The last time we had this talk, just the two of us, was 2018. The last time I had a weirdo to weirdo is because I personally was struggling with the suicides of two prominent people that had it all. At least, it seemed that way to me. This time, I'm coming to you because in the last two weeks, I've had three friends. Uh, friends as in people I know, not friends as in like people I know on the internet. Not that there's anything wrong with those friends. I love those friends. But three friends that I know personally have come to me privately to ask for help because they were having anxiety and depression, either for the first time in their life or they're realizing they've had it for a very long time and it's gone untreated to the point of being detrimental to their relationships, jobs, or everyday quality of life. So if that's happening in my circle, I know it's got to be happening to a lot of you too. And first of all, let me say, it's totally normal. It's situational. We're all dealing with a small dose of PTSD, going from states of extreme forced antisocial behavior, staying in, staying six feet away, not hugging, not going to work or school, not seeing our friends, to all of a sudden being thrust back out in the world where we're being told it's safe and then it's not safe and then you need masks and then you don't need masks and there are people who are telling you that you're crazy for even believing in a disease that's killed almost one million people in our country alone. And even when you know you're right and science is real, when there's a group of people telling you you're wrong, subconsciously it's a trigger. It plants those seeds, even if you're completely secure in your decisions. People I know who are the definition of social butterflies never want to stay in. The bigger the party, the better. The more strangers they can meet and talk to, the happier they are, are telling me that they are experiencing extreme anxiety for sometimes days leading up to a social event. So it's not just you. It's not you at all. <laughs> it's it's post-traumatic stress. And most people hear PTSD and they think you have to be in a horrible accident or be assaulted or withstand years of abuse or go to war. And, and that's not true. PTSD is a disorder that is on an individual level. And something can cause a stress reaction without you even realizing you experienced something damaging. People have developed PTSD from their jaw popping out of place for a minute. People have developed PTSD by, by getting stuck in a rubber costume. That's a true story. <laughs> you are experiencing a stress reaction to a horrifically stressful time in history. And that's the truth, no matter what you believe about masks and shots or, or how you voted in an election. But one thing I wanted to touch on is um, shame. The shame of feeling this way often leads us to bouts of depression, or it keeps us from getting the help we need, whether it's therapeutic or medicinal help. Because often the people in our lives who haven't ever experienced mental health issues will tell us to look on the bright side, look at the positives, and you want to say, listen, bitch, that makes me feel worse. Because I know I have a good life. I know I'm lucky. I know that I'm fortunate. That's why I'm so depressed, because if I know these things... Why is my body betraying me? Why is my body telling me I should panic? Why is my brain not producing the chemicals it's supposed to? And then not only are you anxious, not only are you depressed, you're also ashamed. You question your own experience. You start to feel like you're a little bitch, baby. You can't handle stress. But that's not true. That is not reality. Anxiety is real. It's a real disorder. And it, it can affect you for a period of your life or it can affect you your entire life. I wanted to tell you about how I ended up getting on medication because I think people just assume that, oh, I'm so open about my disorder. Everyone knows I have anxiety. Everyone knows I battle depression, etc. So I just took care of it. No. Nope. I can remember the day it happened. Joe made the appointment. Joe put me in the car. Joe took my arm and walked me into the doctor's office. Joe went into the room with me and told the doctor what I was what was going on while I sat there and cried. And I basically told them, I'm about to kill myself because I can't live like this. They immediately took action. They set me up with a therapist. They immediately got me a script for Zoloft. Now, is it a good idea to go into a hospital and say you're going to kill yourself? No. 
More than likely, if no one is there with you, you'll end up being held for 48 hours on psychiatric watch. So maybe don't let it get to the point I got to before I went in and I got help or actually before I was like forced to go in and and get help. Now today, everyone knows about my disorder. I'm open about my meds. I'm open about my experiences changing meds. People know when I'm having a period of high anxiety or when I've had bad attacks. And the reason I talk about it as often as I do, the reason I post about it on social media as often as I do is for this exact reason. It's for the private messages that I get from people saying, hey, I know that you've dealt with this and I need help. So if you need help, reach out to your friends who have been there. If you don't have friends who have been there, but you need immediate emotional support, call the Suicide Prevention Hotline at one 800 273 8255. This hotline is free to call if you are thinking about suicide, if you are worried about suicidal thoughts, or if you need emotional support. It's confidential and they can help you figure out the next steps with whatever you're going through. They also have an online chat option at suicidepreventionlifeline.org. If you don't need immediate help, but you'd like to talk to someone who has experience, email us at keepitweirdpodcast at gmail.com and write mental health in the subject line. We can't be on call, but the emails we get with mental health in the subject line take priority and we are more than happy to talk to you about mental health. We can't offer any medical help, but we can be a non-judgmental sounding board if you feel like you have no one to talk to. In the meantime, be nice to yourself. Look at the way that you talk to yourself and the things that you think about yourself and imagine saying those things to someone you know. I guarantee you'd never dream of it. And if anyone talked to you the way that you talk to yourself, you wouldn't be friends with them. So keep that in mind right now in this high time of anxiety. The one thing that you can control is how you treat yourself and others. So be kind and keep it weird. (laughs) 